I had no less than six emails last week from people wanting a shortwave receiver to listen to number stations and any HF signals on that won't break the bank. They see people like me using radios such as the ICOM 7300 and 705 and get the impression that this is what you need. Similarly, they envision huge antennas that need lots of space, but this isn't the case either. You can get into shortwave without breaking the bank and I think I've found the ideal setup, both this receiver and the antenna. This is the Malahite DSP2 and what an amazing bit of kit it's turned out to be. I've had mine for a week or so now and I've been blown away by how good it is. This is the upgraded second generation version with a frequency range of 10 kHz to 380 MHz and 404 MHz to 2 GHz with tunable bandwidths of 192 kHz, 96 kHz and 48 kHz. It receives AM, SSB, DSB, CW and both narrow and wide FM. It has a built-in preamplifier and a built-in 500mAh lithium-ion battery, so it's a completely self-contained portable HF radio receiver. The receiver has high sensitivity, but with built-in noise reduction, so it offers a nice listening experience. It's completely software-defined and has the latest firmware version, and when you buy this radio, it's automatically registered with Malahite so you can download and upgrade new firmware versions completely free. In the box you get the receiver itself, a telescopic whip antenna which works well, a dual ended stylus and biro, a metal stand for raising the receiver off a flat surface, a USB cable for charging, a lanyard, a detailed instruction manual and it all comes in this protective padded bag. Looking at the receiver itself, you can see it has a bright touchscreen and a speaker grill in CNC machined aluminium. This whole case is beautifully machined and put together. On the left is a headphone jack, a USB charging point, a standby button and a power switch. The back plate is screwed on and I've mounted the stand in place there too. On the top are two antenna inputs, one for high Z and the other for a 50 ohm input and then a volume control and frequency dial which both function as buttons when pressed. Looking at the main display, along the top is various setting indicators, as well as a signal meter and the frequency and tuning step, both of which can be changed using the right hand dial. There's a headphone and speaker indicator, the waterfall display and a line which indicates your current frequency, and then the menu buttons sit along the bottom. Going into the radio's menus, there's a whole host of settings, so what I'll do is pick out the highlights, but I'll put every function on the screen, so you can pause if you wish to read through them. The radio menu has settings for audio out, switching between high Z and 50 ohm inputs, the preamp and the attenuator. The audio menu has settings for noise reduction, automatic gain control and various filters. The visual menu allows you to change the display settings, colours and LCD sleep timer. NR turns noise reduction on and off. Mode allows you to switch between wide and narrow FM, AM, LSB, USB, DSB and CW and there's also a built in Morse decoder. And finally the band menu allows you to switch between preset bands for quick and easy navigation around the spectrum and you can edit these too. Navigating the bands is as simple as clicking a preselect or typing in a frequency and if you see something you want to navigate to further up or down the band then you click on the screen to go there. So before I show you examples of what this radio can hear, let me talk you through the antenna I got to go with mine. This is the GA800 Active Loop Shortwave Antenna from Dashibo and it's great. It's a 10.2 inch diameter loop with a small control box underneath and it works from 10 kHz to 159 MHz. It's designed for indoor use but you could use it outdoor too, for example on a pole but you'd have to weatherproof it as it's not designed for outdoor use. Another thing to point out is that this antenna is not made for transmitting, so it's important that you don't key up if you're using this on something like an ICOM 705, as you'll likely cause some damage. 
It's also important to make sure that the control box is fully charged, as it has a built-in signal amplification circuit that works best when the battery is full. In the box you get the antenna along with the control box, a simple manual, a 5 meter BNC cable, a USB-C power cable, two more output cables, one being a BNC to 3.5mm jack and the other a BNC to BNC for use with different radios, and finally a BNC to SMA adapter. The control box is USB-C chargeable with a built-in 2600mAh battery and all you have to do is charge it up, connect it to your radio and you're good to go. So how does this whole setup do? Let's take a look. Well, me and the wife live in a little semi-detached bungalow, very small garden, it's only um, 40 foot by 20, so it really doesn't give me a lot of space to put a lot in. Uh, I use the electronic uh, log book, HRD, uh, there, I'll give you a report on the next over, and uh, the QTH. Right. She was sitting, kneeling at Ian's feet, and he said, you know that line, light stickens, and the crow makes wing to the rookie wood. He said, light stickens, and the crow makes wing to the Professional grey sealant with high mould resistance, easy cooling and minimal shrinkage. Choose Boston Pro Sealants. Pep Guardiola says it's easy for managers to get emotional after matches when asked about Mikel Arteta's outburst at the weekend. And England will play for England. Oscar November 2, Juliet Whiskey, India. Very good evening, my friend. Thank you for calling me. You covered the 5 by 9 in North Italy, over. Uh, just looking now. I think they come with a speaker, don't they? I thought that was the thing, they all come in the box with a speaker. I was like, I don't have to believe you, buy them new. Yeah, you can, you can get them with, without or with. So, uh, yeah. Uh, So, as you can see, this setup performs remarkably well, and if you want something to get into HF and shortwave listening, then I highly recommend it. It's now my go-to portable setup for receiving. If you'd like to find out more, then I'll put some links in the description below for both the receiver and the antenna.